was a day like uh, any other to start with. Going over into central London, but uh, on, on the walk over the bridge, um, somebody came into my, to my site and uh, saw, saw somebody sitting on the side of the bridge. I looked around and to see if they were with anybody and they weren't and <clears throat> yeah I walked over and, and asked why they were sitting there yeah he replied and he told me oh, I'm, I'm here because I'm going to kill myself today I guess my story starts when I was very really young, I was taken to a child psychologist when I was five and uh, I was seeing things and hearing things that weren't there. And then that continued, I guess, throughout sort of childhood, adolescence. It got really hard towards the end of my teenage years. I wasn't talking, I wasn't talking about it because I was really um, embarrassed and um, ashamed of what was going on in my head. Ultimately, I, I had a breakdown at the age of 20. I became psychotic and I was really unwell. I ended up in a psychiatric hospital and they diagnosed me with schizoaffective disorder, which is schizophrenia and bipolar. Never was um, mental health talked about in, in, yeah, anywhere, anywhere at that time. I just wanted to almost um, pretend it wasn't there. No, it's, no, just in complete denial and just, yeah, it was just despair. It was taking over my life more and more. It's the first term of my third year at university. One night, um, I drank too much and I ended up becoming psychotic. I was taken to the local A&E and then eventually I was put into a psychiatric hospital. I reached a point where I just couldn't bear another, another minute, let alone another sort of day or week in that hospital. Um, and I just gave up. I just thought, I can't do this anymore. So I, I ended up going to Waterloo Bridge in London to jump off the edge. I was careful that I didn't want to startle him, so in order to approach him, I kind of uh, walked around to the side to keep the distance, and uh, I just said some simple words. I said, uh, "Hi, mate. Why are you sitting on the bridge?" At first, I I didn't want to talk. I just I was just like, "Leave me alone. Just go away." Um, you know, didn't didn't want to engage with him. But he was very, um, well, very kind and, and patient and empathetic. And um, he just, he just said, it's okay, you know, it's okay and it's fine. And, you know, whatever's going on, don't, don't be embarrassed. And that was what got me to open up, actually, was him saying, uh, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. I didn't necessarily try and fix me, he just let me talk. And um, I've never had that before. We were probably chatting for like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes on the side of the bridge. He'd stepped over onto the pavement. Uh, we were probably another 10 minutes talking on the pavement. Um, he was really coming around to the idea of wanting to sit down uh, and, and, and talk. Neil was just very gentle and just very like, no, it's fine, just, you know, you can tell me if you want. I don't know, it sounds simple, like just listening, but we all, I think when we, hear someone struggling, we want to be like, oh, well, maybe you could try this, or, or you need to do this, or, but actually just listening, really, that's so powerful. The police were alerted somehow. The police car came, um, took Johnny away, took a statement from me. So we were, we were quite close to going for coffee, but it, it you know, that never happened. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the complete end of our interaction. It's an extraordinary sort of relationship, to be honest. You know, um, he went from sort of saving my life to now being a good friend and colleague. Johnny has done relentless campaigning on his own for many years, but I've, I've joined him full time with that recently. We're friends above all else, but we, we do a lot together every day in, in the mental health space as well. I know I can always talk to Neil, and I know I'll always get that same response of, understanding and patience and um, kindness and non-judgment. It's just, it's, it makes such a difference to know there's someone like that, you know, you can talk to. Uh, anything that's going on, you can just talk to them. Uh, so I'm very lucky.
My involvement with Mental Health UK came about initially um, through Rethink Mental Illness. After I was reunited with Johnny, um, they invited me in to do some uh, awareness work around suicide with Johnny. And then more recently, you know, they, they're part of now Mental Health UK network. So um, we're ambassadors for Rethink. Uh, we're also ambassadors for Mental Health UK. Mental health, there's still a lot of stigma around it. And I think in the workplace especially, I think it's gonna be a massive benefit both to Lloyds and to Mental Health UK to have this sort of partnership. I really think that, that for the first time ever, mental health and physical health will be on a par in the workplace because of that relationship. I think having a bank like Lloyds who have got such a huge reach um, across the country, I think having them get on board and, and talk about mental health and, and show that they're actively you know, making a difference out there, not just to um, employees, but to their customers as well. I think that's huge. And I think it's really gonna have a, well, it's gonna make a huge impact across society. It's really exciting.